So in this video, we're gonna be diving into exactly the key steps behind building a profitable real estate sales team. Now, I've had a lot of people that have come to me over the years that are saying, Henry, what do you do in regards to building a sales team? How do you build a profitable team? What are the first three steps to building a real estate sales team? I'm going to give away all my tips, my tricks, everything I've learned about building a team if I was gonna redo it from scratch. When it comes to building a real estate team, agents who have done next to no business, they go, well, I am thinking I'm gonna start a real estate team. First and foremost, what are you talking about? Because a real estate sales team is strictly the growth of your current business. You don't hire people so that you can grow. It's the other way around. You're growing, so you need support. What often happens is that you're not doing enough business on your own, so you want to bring on another salesperson because you heard Johnny from down the street or down the office line here is doing really well and he's a young kid, he's a hot shot, you want to bring him on your team because maybe you could just mentor him the right way and bring in some business from you. That's not the right way to build a team. The progression of building a team is you work on your own and you build and you sell and you're building up your own clientele so that over time you get so busy and you're selling so much real estate, you need to hire staff to support your current business. And then what ends up happening is you end up building staff to support your business and you can rise up the ranks so that you're no longer doing the day-to-day -day work and you're only solely focused on a small amount of the most profitable tasks. And this way you can grow your business, grow your income over time. That's what ends up happening when you're building a business. In this video, we're gonna be talking about exactly the steps to not only getting there, but exactly what I would advise somebody who's building a sales team to do to make sure they don't make the same mistakes that I've made in the past that have cost me a ton of time and a ton of money. So when you're building a real estate sales team, one of the most important things, number one, is gonna be money management. So when it comes to money management, the very first thing I like to say is that if you are not netting, okay, there's a difference between grossing $10,000 a month, which means hypothetically you are selling one home a month at $10,000 gross income or whatever, 12,000 minus your broker fees, and you're selling one home, this is like taxable income. That means after all of your expenses, at the end of the month, netting, net taxable, $10,000 a month. Once you hit a consistent net of $10,000 a month for three consecutive months in a row. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're in the random middle of the country and your average commission check per deal is like four grand, understand that you might have to do it a little bit less. Like you're going to be netting maybe eight and you can start bringing on your first employee. And I'll explain in a second what I mean here is that people hire too late and or people hire too soon. So I'll explain both sides of the coin. Hiring too late is you're making 20,000 a month or more and you don't want to hire an assistant because because you want to net all the money or you're scared if you're going to be able to afford them or you want to grow your business. Like it just doesn't make any sense. Like you need support if you want to grow. And netting 20, 30, whatever thousand dollars a month or more, you can afford a salary. But when it comes to money management, what I often see is that people also hire way too soon. Like they've sold one house and then they hire an assistant and then they can't afford them. Like that just doesn't make logical sense. But when you've done it three months in a row, this is the marker. You're netting $10,000 a month three months in a row, which means you've made $30,000 in one quarter. This way you can clearly afford a salary of X dollars an hour. You also do not need to just straight jump into a full-time employee. We're going to talk about this in a second, but if you don't know your numbers, you don't understand your money management, and you don't know what you're actually netting at the end of the month, you're never going to hire somebody. Dial in in your numbers because there is going to be metrics that you need to meet in order to hire your first employee. Because listen, making a lot of money is cool, but saving and keeping a lot of money is even better. And then obviously investing a lot of money to help you make even more money at the end of the day is the best. And again, I want you to understand something. I didn't understand how money worked. I was good at making calls and that was it. So what ended up happening was that I never had a lot of money on me. Even though I was making $50,000 a month at 24 years old, I didn't have a lot of money in the bank because I didn't know how to save it. Because I didn't know how much money I was making because I didn't know how to track it. So this is why tracking money is so important. So point number two is hiring your first employee. When you're hiring your first employee, I see the most common mistake ever. I see this all the time. By the way, I do the same exact thing. What I often see 
is that agents for their very first hire, they will hire another salesperson. Your problem is not selling, is that you need to get yourself only into selling so that you can delegate all of the paperwork and administrative tasks. So many agents, again, including myself, my very first hire ever, 23 years old, was I brought on two salespeople, agents who would help me sell. It just makes no sense. That means I'm putting more support work, more transactional paperwork, work on me when the highest dollar productive activity is the selling. And you could delegate transaction coordination in this business for anywhere between $10 and $20 an hour. So you're basically giving yourself more $10 to $20 an hour work that doesn't make any sense. So your first hire is a transaction coordinator who can sometimes double as a listing coordinator. If you're only netting 10 or maybe 15, $20,000 a month, means you're only selling maybe one or two houses-ish or so a month. So that means that person's really not gonna be overwhelmed. The coolest part ever, your first employee can also be part-time. They don't have to be 40 hours a week, right? You take $15 an hour times 20 hours a week, you're gonna spend $300 a week for 20 hours. That's great. That's $1,200 a month to take all of your support work off of your, your shoulders. And for $1,200, give you a quick example about when I rebuilt my sales team when I was 23 years old. By July, I was making $10,000 a month. I hired a transaction coordinator at a per file transaction basis. So I paid them $400 a transaction. They did my listing coordination and my transaction coordination, $300 for a buyer side and a $400 for the listing side. But you could also do a tra per transaction basis. This is also super supportive. I have people who are per transaction now. So either way works. And then what happened was within a matter of 90 days, I went from $10,000 a month to $20,000 a month. So by July down to September, I was making $20,000. And then by November and December, I had made $50,000, okay? The cool part is that, again, that progression will allow you to sell more real estate because all I was able to do, I basically cut off all of the tasks that are less than $20 an hour so that I had an, a support person to do all that work so I could take all that time and just make more phone calls and go on more appointments. That will easily double or triple your business. If your first hire does not at least double your business in the next 90 days, it's the wrong person. Fire them, fire them right away. They're not a good fit because that person should be easily able to help you double your business because that means you're taking all that extra time and focusing it on selling. Another key thing could also just be the fact that you're just not making more phone calls because if you're not taking all that extra time and putting it into your business, you're not going to grow. <laughs> you're just gonna do the same business and now you're paying somebody to do that. Point number three when it comes to building your sales team is delegate. Okay, and getting focused on the right tasks that make you the most money. So like we talked about when it comes to hiring your first employee, this should be the delegation of the things that actually do not make you money, right? Anything that does not make you money, which is why I was trying to see the part-time employee. So that way they can support you with really anything that doesn't make you money, AKA pulling comps, AKA maybe posting on social media, whatever the case may be. I, I run a, a free coaching program, which again, you can check out in the description down below, but we talk about this a lot when you're building out your sales team, your new focus, your only focus that makes you the most money is what? Selling, yes, selling. Being either on the phone or face-to-face -face with, with a lead, right? Or face-to-face -face with a client. That is the only things that really make you money other than really negotiating a deal, right? That's it. So if you're not doing those three tasks, basically at all times when you've already hired your first employee, you need to focus on then delegating those tasks so that you can focus. Again, I went from like one or two deals a month from July to literally in December, I think we closed 28 transactions. It was like the biggest month I ever had in my entire career. You know, we kind of, you know, had a few deals that got pushed. I got a, I had a portfolio sale of a couple properties. Like it was a massive month for me. I made over $50,000 for the very first time in December of 2018. Again, I'm 23, 24 years old at the time. I didn't even understand how making that kind of money was even possible. But that was possible because I had hired some decent employees for my first employee, right? I don't get me wrong, got really, really lucky. I did interview quite a number of people. So when you're hiring, you don't just hire the first person that you interview, okay? You wanna interview typically somewhere between five and 10 people at an absolute minimum, and then you're gonna choose the best person for the job. The one thing that I could possibly say also is that somebody who has a bunch of young kids and is not able to work from an office and not be distracted by those young kids might not be a decent fit. Also, making sure they're always 100% licensed is also gonna be super imperative. And also make sure that if you're gonna hire them you know, part-time or per transaction, you, know, you have a uh, dollar figure that you're not gonna hire them more than that. Because if you're gonna hire somebody for way too much money to write off the 
gate, it's going to set you up for failure. Like I've had people where they're like, yeah, I pay my transaction coordinator, you know, $25 an hour. That is insane for your first employee. <laughs> You know, that's insane, which is what will derail you from getting focused because you'll be spending way too much money on this. And if they're not educated and they haven't done deals and they're not licensed, I mean, like, it's just going to derail you because you're going to spend all day long not selling because you're going to be managing, micromanaging this employee. You can even set up a kind of a system with them where they're not allowed to reach out to you, okay, between the hours of 9 and 12 because that should be only you focused on phone calls. And if it's super, super important, guess what? It gets to wait till 1201 because you need to be focusing on sales and we both know and I'm telling you from experience nothing is going to happen that is so catastrophic in those three hours that you can't handle at 1201. Point number four, hiring a coach and or mentor in your life. If you're not going to hire a coach, I'm telling you from experience, you're not going to grow at the rate that is truly possible for your potential. They think that like, well, you know, I know what I'm doing or I can do this on my own. People don't get a coach when they make it to the professional level. They've had a coach their whole career, which has allowed them to be so good so that they can get into the professional leagues. You don't get a personal trainer when you're overweight. That's way too late. You want to get a personal trainer when you're already in decent shape and you want to get an even better shape. Like you want to have a trainer the whole time throughout your life so that you can keep on track with your health, keep on track with your money. That's why you get a financial advisor very early on in life. You get a great accountant very early on in life. This is why like specific things are crucial for your growth as early as possible. And I'm telling you, I hired my very first coach when I was 22 years old. I had sold my very first two properties, kind of like it was like buying a sell with the same client, and I reinvested. I made 30, 000, nearly 30,000 bucks with those first two deals, and I invested $10,000 of it in coaching. And guess what? It turned out pretty damn well for me. And I never, ever, ever stopped getting coached after that. Never. I've always been a part of a coaching program of some sort and or had really close mentors that I meet with very regularly. Like it's crucial to your growth because what happens is that they can see things farther than you can. They can see around corners more than you can. Like my mentors, I would never be where I'm at today without them. Like knowing with the economy, when to shift, when to fire certain employees and paying attention to certain things, certain ways and looking at certain problems differently so you could find better solutions than other people would faster. I mean like guys, like, it's like, you know, again, this might sound really weird, but it's truly like injecting steroids into your business. I mean, like it's the best possible thing that you could do for your business because imagine that you were able to basically skip steps. You want to know how to get rich quick? Hire a coach, okay? You really want to know how to get rich quick? Invest in yourself. Hire a coach as soon as you possibly can because what that's going to allow you to do is skip steps, but you're going to avoid the mistakes. And if you could just avoid two or three really costly mistakes when it comes to building a team or building a sales business in general or investing in real estate, you're going to grow a lot faster and have a lot more money in the bank at the end of the day. Point number five, creating systems in your real estate business. So this is specifically around just about every single facet in your business, creating a system about literally, it's called the file flow. Okay. So a file flow is from A to Z, what happens when a lead comes into your business? Lead is generated, you do an intake form, you get some information from them, you know, what they're looking to do, their motivation, when they're looking to do something, create a game plan, meet them face to face, get a contract signed, once a contract is signed, then the property's gonna get listed, you have your listing coordinator do X, Y, and Z, then what's gonna happen is that like they're gonna coordinate with the runner to put a sign a lockbox up, they're gonna coordinate with the photographer to go take pictures, they're gonna possibly coordinate getting social media posts getting prepped, coming soon, all these things that are gonna be done around the listing, the property's listed, this is all gonna happen during the property getting listed. You're going to drop off booties. The house might need to be cleaned. You're going to walk this entire process. Now that it's listed, offers are going to come in. This is the process around once offers come in, how they're going to get organized, how you're going to negotiate them, how you're going to give feedback to the client if there's no offers, how you're going to give feedback, how you receive feedback, the process from literally every step of the listing process until an offer is accepted. Once an offer is accepted, then you're going to go through the process of how you're going to get attorney information, how you're even going to send properties into attorney review. What does your template look like? How do you even get information to your transaction coordinator? How do you get information to all the attorneys, both agents? How does everyone get on the same page? When is it the right time to schedule inspections, appraisals? How do you organize it in the, in the way of how do you communicate with a client when their next step is X, Y, and Z? What does the text templates look like to your client, to your transaction coordinator, to the other agent, to the seller, to the buyer? How do you update everybody? Literally every single step from A to Z, from the second a lead is met to this, uh, even a year after that client has closed. What is every single step along the way? How is it done? And how can you improve it? Literally just started with a piece of freaking paper and me 
and my first ever employee. We just talked about how would we look at every single fashion, every single step in the business from A to Z. How would we do it if we had unlimited money? Now, obviously we didn't have unlimited money, but what we do is that we would bring it back, scale it back, and we would just come up with a game plan of like how each step would be handled. We just followed the system. So next time when we brought on a next employee, they can see the file flow. This is the next step. This is where you plug in. This is your specific tasks to do as this being this type of employee. It makes it very simple. Same thing with marketing, how every single post should have an explanation, when to post, how to post, how the content is created, when the content is gonna be recorded, how it's gonna be edited. When you're on a listing presentation, you literally should have a 10 point system around how you do your listing presentation. What time you show up, how soon you show up, the way you park, the way you dress, what you come prepared with, what you say, the exact time that you say it, everything is coordinated. I go on a listing presentation, it is the same thing every single time, like it has been for the last thousand plus listing presentations that I've gone on. It is the same way, it looks the same way, I dress almost the same every single time. It's for a reason, it works. This is what I'm saying, you create systems that are duplicatable. So that way you can have people plug into your team and this way every single transaction is done the same way. Have you ever heard about the franchise model, right? Like McDonald's, you have the Starbucks model. It is done the same way every single time. That's why when you order a Frappuccino, it tastes the same no matter where you are because it's done the same exact way. This is why systems in place and getting a coach that can teach you how the systems can be done, but this is crucial to your real estate business. Point number six, lead generation done differently. The only way to truly scale when it comes to lead generation is a couple key things. Number one, you need to generate more leads than you're closing on a monthly basis. So if you're closing three deals a month, if you're not signing at least three to four new clients every month, your business is going to decline, which means that you're probably gonna to need to generate more leads or higher quality leads each and every single month. Hypothetically, let's just say you're generating, say 60, because there's 30 days in a month on average. Let's say you're generating two leads a day, seven days a week, you're generating 60 leads a month. On 60 leads a month, let's say that you're converting at 5%, closing three deals a month, and closing at a 5% ratio. That probably means that a lot of them are cold calls and a small percentage of them are referrals. And that means if you're closing three deals a month, that means you should be signing three to four contracts per month so that the next month is just as good or better than the month before. And for whatever reason, if you only sign two contracts this month, but you close three because the previous month you signed three or four, right? You can understand where your business is going. If you're signing less than you're closing that month, you're going to have a problem. Again, your business is going to go down. You need to be paying very close attention to that. So lead generation done differently. I have multiple lead generation pillars. I believe in cold calling. I think it's an incredibly powerful way to generate leads. However, the most important way to generate leads is the following. Number one, repeat clients. Getting a client to buy again and again and again and again. This is why I love investor clients because you can have one client who continuously buys and sells with you. The other fashion of that is getting referrals from past client. Past client referrals are very, very important. And if you're not getting past client referrals, that means you're not doing one of a few things, not keeping in touch, not building a relationship. You're not building that type of community or high level of service with that client. The next most powerful thing is from your sphere of influence, your professional partners list. If you're not getting referrals, referrals from a list of people that you spend a lot of time nurturing those relationships from, you're going to have a very, very, very tough career because what's going to happen is that you're going to be reliant on making tons of cold calls every day for the rest of your life. Who wants to do that? Uh, not me. I want to be able to travel. I just went on a 17 day trip to the Middle East at a fantastic vacation with my fiance for her 30th birthday. And I came back to making more money this month than I ever made ever in my career. That only happens because I get a lot of referrals. I built up a massive clientele, massive database of people who know me, like me, trust me and know how to refer me business and will continue to do so because I build relationships with them. And you need to be more focused on building referrals. You want to go from three to 10 transactions a month or one to three or five or six transactions a month, you're going to need more referrals. Or you're gonna to have to generate an ungodly amount of cold leads. Which would you rather get? 100 cold leads or 10 referrals a month? Obviously the 10 referrals, because you're probably gonna close five to, five to eight of them. By the time you get a referral, they're probably looking to do something sooner. Cold calls are much farther out. The only thing that I can say for lead generation is I'm spending next to zero dollars on anything paid advertising wise. I would rather you spend all of your money on building relationships. Take people out to dinner, 
Take them out to golf. Like Spend money on building relationships. It is the best money you can possibly spend with that. So I'm a huge fan of spending the least amount of money possible on any advertising. Spend all of that on deepening your relationships. All right, number seven, upgrading your level of service. Now, we've all heard of five-star before. Are you giving your client five-star service? This is a key thing that you need to be focusing on is how do you take your level of service from where it is right now to five stars. There's a little exercise that we could do really, really quickly. So what you're going to do is you take out a piece of paper. On your piece of paper, you're going to write down seven star service at the top. Yes, seven star, seven star service. And you're going to go nuts. Like if you had unlimited money, what would you do for your client? And just write down every single thing that you would do. Literally just go nuts. Write down hundreds of things that you would do if you had unlimited money and you were talking about seven star service in the real estate business. I would do white glove. I would, you know, every single property, there'd be a red carpet. Everyone would be picked up in a Rolls Royce or into a helicopter from property your property, they have champagne and all this kind of stuff. They'd be treated like kings and queens. And points that like you want to go nuts. And then we're going to kind of scale it back a little bit. You're like, well, I might not be able to do that right now based on my budget, but I can do 20% of this, 60% of this, whatever it is. You're going to be able to constantly think of ideas of how to improve your service. We came up with doing, um, you know, baskets for all of our agents. What happens is that our agents have little baskets with snacks, waters, um, it has booties in it, you know, hand sanitizers, gloves, masks, whatever we had to have during the pandemic. Thinking about like, how else can we provide high levels of service to our clients? It was like a really simple thing. On top of that, we come up with closing gift ideas. We came up with, you know, how we can upgrade the level of uh, communication between our clients where, you know, certain clients all get on a certain, you know, platform where like there's a group texted between X, Y, people constantly in communication where they're able to communicate with us 24 hours a day 365 it is just we set up an expectation of how how and when they're going to receive communications from us you know everything systemized like again guys you want to be able to upgrade your level of service because the only thing that you can compete on in this business is two things commission and service. So you can either be the cheapest person in town or you can have the best service. You really only have two things you're ever going to compete on with another agent. You basically all do the same thing. However, if you have an incredibly high quality of service or you have the cheapest commission, that's really all you're going to compete on. So again, like which one do you want to be? I'm not going to tell you ever to cut your commission. Focus on how you can bring more value than cutting your fees. All right, number eight, we're talking about how to conduct a meeting the correct way. Every single day, you need to have a daily team meeting. Every single morning, 8 a.m., 8 30, 8, 45, 9 o'clock. Point is, before any business is done, everybody jump on a daily team meeting, which again, some of my companies, we do it via Zoom. Some of my companies, we do it in person. Every day, same exact time, and it's the same agenda every single day. For daily team meetings, we like to have it no longer than 15 minutes. It doesn't have to be anything longer than that. And all you're going to do is you're going to do some wins, personal, professional wins. Then the next thing you're going to dive into is uh, red flags. What are some red flags, things that absolutely need to be jumped on right away. Next thing you can jump into is transactions that you're working on right now. All of your transactions, we review every single transaction every single day, all the listings you have, all of the you know offers that have been submitted, all of the pending contracts that you have, you're gonna view those every single day. And by the way, if you are by yourself right now, do this. If you're by yourself right now and it's just you, you still wanna review all your contracts every single day. When I had no employees after COVID, I was still reviewing all of my deals. Before I rebuilt my team again, I still reviewed all my deals by myself. And now I still review all my deals with my team each and every single day. It's what you need to be doing so that you can be on top of everything every single day. Last thing, you can always end the meeting with, how can I support you today? Talking to your employees, how can I best support you today? You need to invite them to say, you know, come up with one thing. And if they can't come up with something, you can say like, okay, well, let's role play a conversation you had with the client. You can always role play. It's a very, very simple thing. Let's role play a conversation you're gonna have with John and make sure they can start talking like you would want them to talk to you. Because if you don't educate them on how to do it, you're going to assume that they're doing it some type of way. And the last thing you're gonna to wanna to do is have to micromanage that employee to making sure that they do it the same way every single day. That's how you do a daily team meeting. Next thing is also one-on-one -on -one meetings. You always wanna do this. When it comes to having a one-on-one -on -one meeting with any type of employee, which by the way, I would recommend that every single employee that you have, you should meet with them at least once a week for at least 15 to 30 minutes and have an agenda. What would you like to learn from today's meeting? Is there any questions that you have? What support do you need in this moment? But most importantly, you're gonna be saying the following. My intention for this meeting is blank. By the end of this meeting, I'd like to have X, Y, or Z accomplished. Uh, this way you have an understanding that like the meeting doesn't end until X, Y, and Z is is completed because a lot of the time what you do is just like, hi, John, let's talk about blank. And then at the end of it, you just had 38 minutes or three hours worth of a conversation and nothing was actually solved. So you want to write down what you want to have completed, the reason, the purpose for the meeting before you go into the meeting. And by the way, I've learned this from a lot of my mentors, stop setting up one hour meetings. You can get meetings done in five freaking minutes. For your next meeting, what you're going to do is this, okay? If you have employees right now, you're going to go to your clock app 
and you're gonna go to a, uh, I think it's the timer part of it, and you're gonna literally set it for 15 minutes. And then your goal is that your next meeting can has to be less than 15 minutes. And then you're gonna try to get it down to 12, and then down to 10, and then down to eight, and then down to five. Every meeting does not need to be three hours, one hour, 30 minutes. It does not have to take that long. You can do five minute meetings. It's fantastic. And last thing I'll say when it comes to meetings is that if you have multiple employees, you should be doing a weekly meeting for at least 30 minutes to an hour. Do a training, do an update. Like you wanna make sure you can focus on building a culture while you're doing your team meetings. And point number nine is hiring salespeople and scaling. Cause I know this is what all of you want to do is you want to sell a ton of real estate, have a big sales team, make a ton, a ton, a ton of money. Yes, you're going to need quite a lot of employees and or quite a lot of salespeople. So let me just say this as an overall rule of thumb. You do not need a lot of employees to make a lot of money. You don't need a lot of employees to make a lot of money. Some of my businesses, I have less employees now in some of my businesses and I make somewhere between about three times and then other businesses I make about five times with less employees. So what I would recommend is that you grow slowly but surely. You hire slow, fire fast. That is the best thing you can possibly do. So this is a revolving door type of industry. You're gonna hire a lot of people and you're gonna end up letting, you know, a lot of people are gonna leave you, okay? That's just how this industry is. You have fantastic culture and you're still gonna have people who join you and leave you. When you're hiring salespeople, people are looking for great commissions, great mentorship, right? With opportunity to grow. If you have great training, great mentorship, and you have opportunities for people to grow with great commission splits, they're probably gonna stay with you for a good length of period of time. However, a lot of people will end up leaving, which is why you need to be constantly recruiting in this business. For some of my sales teams, like I have hired dozens and dozens and dozens of employees and people are gonna come and they're gonna go. And they're gonna come and they're gonna go. So if I've done in the past, to solve a lot of these issues is the following. Number one, I'm always recruiting. Number two, I fire very, very, very often when it comes to a sales agent who's not performing at a high level because a lot of the times what people will do is that they wanna have a lot of people and if that salesperson isn't really producing, at least it'll even out. Or if that person only produces a little bit, it's better than them not producing at all because hypothetically, they're on 100% commission and if they close a deal, it's better than zero dollars, right? No, it's wrong. What I've learned is that I want a small team that's very profitable. Because when I had a team of 11 people, I was doing 600 grand a year. Guess what? I was doing 80% of the business. Like my agents weren't making a lot of money. They just weren't. I was making a lot of money. I made up 80% of the income, right? And I had a lot of agents that were 100% commission. They just weren't doing any business. So I'm telling you from experience, having a lot of agents doesn't equate to a lot of money, but it's the opportunity to. But what I've learned is that actually what you really want is a small amount of very high performing agents that you pay a good amount of money to, a small amount of high performance agents, and a lot of support staff transaction coordinator, listing coordinator, you're gonna have a marketing coordinator, you're gonna have a runner, and you're gonna have a client concierge. Those five employees can help you grow a multi-million dollar income business. By the way, showing assistant, very, very supportive, and that's gonna be a key hire. And your transaction coordinator, those two people are gonna be your absolute best hires that you can possibly make. If you have a great transaction coordinator or coordinators and a fantastic showing agent, you're going to do great. In the market where there's not a lot of buyers, fire your showing agents, fire your buyers, agents. You don't need the extra support because in this market, when there's no buyer transactions or very little buyer transactions, I had at one point three buyer's agents that I paid $36,000 a year to each plus bonuses because I had a ton of buyer clients. And then what happened was that they did really, really well for a great period of time. And then all of a sudden it tapered off because the buyer, it became so competitive. This was during COVID. So I ended up having all these buyer's agents. We started closing a ton of deals, like, you know, record closings, you know, nearly over hundred homes that year. We had a great, we did a lot of business, but what ended up happening is I had to let them all go because there wasn't any buyer business to give them. My mentor said, you need to just let them go because what happens is the market is going to shift and you're not going to need them anymore, which is why I'm telling you the scalability, the real scalability is going to be of your time so that I can scale myself through delegation of all the work that doesn't actually pay. Last but not least, I just wanna say I appreciate you so much. Put some comments down in the section down below. If you have any questions or anything like that, I'm gonna create more content just like this. And again, I have a free, yes, free coaching program called the Blitz Coaching Program. It's a weekly at 12.30 Eastern Standard Time every single week for one hour absolutely free coaching. So if you want to know how to scale your business, join my free coaching program. I'm sure you're going to love it. It's in the description down below. Other than that, guys, I love you so much and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.